All right, thank you so much, Maria. Young people have the power to affect sweeping change. I know I sound old when I say young people, but Auntie Michaela feels that way sometimes. The key to allowing them to be that change and help mend racial divides lies in giving them the tools to do so. It's also by allowing them to have honest questions and take in honest answers. Uncomfortable conversations with a black boy is just one way young readers can begin to short circuit racism within their own lives, within their own communities. Joining me now, the author of the new book, New York Times bestselling author and yeah, yeah, sports uh, Fox <laughs> analyst, blah, blah, blah. But my, my friend, my brother, Emmanuel Acho. Emmanuel, you know I love speaking with you, and I am, I'm thrilled to see you again. First of all, how you doing? Michaela, so good to see you. Auntie Michaela, it had a little <laughs> ring to it. It had a little it ring. It does have a little ring. I, look, I'm a professional auntie at this point. Um, the <laughs> book, I'm so, I was so thrilled to see this, and nothing gave me more pleasure than seeing a young Emmanuel Acho. Did you channel him a little bit? It, when you thought about this book and what you kind of wish had been around for him? Mm. Yes, if the, the young boy, the younger version of me um, would have had this book, I would have had a much more secure adolescent and pre-adolescent uh, childhood, if you will. Because Michaela, when I was 13, 14, 15, you know, I was hearing that image on the back was hearing Emmanuel, I mean, you don't even talk like you're black. Emmanuel, you don't <laughs> dress like you're black. Emmanuel, you're like an Oreo. Oh, black honey. on the outside, white Ooh, on the inside. Ouch, so ouch, that, ouch. Yeah. that boy who you're seeing there had an identity complex, an identity crisis. I mean, I, I, I look black, but so many of my white friends are telling me I'm not. So, Michaela, I, I want to dismantle and disarm racial ignorance and racial insensitivity before it gives birth to racism. What did you keep in mind when you adapted your best-selling New York Times selling a novel or book, rather not novel, book for this audience of now, right? Because now is a different time than when you grew up and when I came up. The kids now, you got to think a little differently, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you still have to find a way to cut through. You yeah, have to meet yeah. kids where they're, where they're at. But let's be honest, kids are smarter than they were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this generation of teen is smarter than my generation of teen. And the <laughs> next generation of teen will be smarter than the previous generation of teen. Yeah. And so I just try to make sure to speak to the children as though they can digest the concepts. And what I like also, too, and this is what you said about your, your other book as well, is that don't get this twisted. This isn't a conversation just for black kids. This is a conversation for everybody. You want to have this conversation just like the conversations that you're having on your program with everybody, right? We want people, stakeholders at the table. We want people that are uncomfortable talking about race at the table. And you want kids in that space here to feel welcome. Absolutely, because you have to understand this. We all have to be educated better education. Yep. Yep. There's a difference between a autobiography and a biography. <laughs> An autobiography is written by the person about the person. Yeah. A biography is simply written about the person. Yeah. American history is often an autobiography. It is white history written by white people. And you may find a different interpretation of stories based upon who the author is. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to equip our black and brown youth, then also equip and help educate our white youth, just so we can also hear different vantage points of, of, of truths, so that we can also hear that one's experience is also their expertise. And if I can help a black or brown boy, teenager, not have to suffer like I suffered yeah. by educating them and empowering them and educating our white youth as well so that they don't step into the landmines of racial insensitivity yes. and that they can be better, um, then I'm going to do so. You know, it hit me as you were talking, too, because we're also sort of examining what it means to be male in America, right? The, the, we know that men and women have different paths and mis different journeys. People who identify as male or female have different paths and different journeys. Um, but the idea of raising a young man in today's world, there's extra stuff to be um, mindful of. Do you delve into that in, a bit in the book? Yeah, I just think that there are so many things in general to be mindful of. But here's the kicker. It's 
can we step out of our own shoes as frequently as possible and try to step into the shoes of others? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the kicker, Michaela, is we're always mindful of things we're mindful of, but can we be mindful of what someone else might mind? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where we have to improve on is we all know what's important to us. Michaela, I know what's important to me. But what's important to Michaela? The white person, they may know what's important to them. Right. But what's important to the black person? The black person, they may know what's important to them, but what is important to the white person? And also, do I have the tools to help better myself? And do I have the tools to help better others? And so I just wanted to continue to give each and every one of us tools because it's not just are we mindful about ourselves, but am I mindful about others. Yeah, because we do not walk this world in this world alone. Okay, can I get you to put the Uncle Emmanuel hat on for a second? Would you indulge me and meet the kids where they're at? We've got some kids from the Boys and Girls Clubs around the area who uh, want to talk to you. What do you What do you say? There I they are. Love it. I love Look at all those it. faces. What's up,